time to let the ninja out. Good morning, YouTube. I'm in beautiful Orange County, Southern California on a foggy morning. And today we're on the Versus 300. Got the giant loop tank bag. We're basically just, uh, well, commuting to work for one, but I wanted to test these uh, brackets I 3D printed that move the windshield forward, tilted it forward, rather, and uh, up about 40 millimeters. So. Yeah, let's uh, let's get going. You know, through the uh, magic of video, I'm doing the intro halfway through my commute. How fitting is that? I'm on a Kawasaki and let the good times roll on the radio there. Radio. All right, I had to turn the music down. Good morning, YouTube. So, it's been a while. Some of you guys that uh, are returning viewers may have noticed I had to fly to Anchorage, oh no, sorry, Fairbanks, Alaska, about three weeks ago to do an install in a hospital there. And uh, that went well, but I promptly caught COVID. And the next two weeks have been interesting to say the least still got a little congestion going on still waking up with nausea and headache and congestion and all that good stuff occasional scratchy throat but basically overall feeling you know 85 ish percent so if you don't have a fever or you haven't had a fever in 24 hours you're you know you're allowed to go back to work and infect other people pretty cool huh anyway so i'm back sorry for the absence but uh i've been sleeping a lot those of you that had covid know what i'm talking about it's all you want to do is sleep but today we are on the kawasaki versus 300. um Actually, it's been a while since I've ridden a bike to work. But anyway, uh, wanted to put some more time on the Barnett clutch. It still feels great. I also 3D printed some brackets here. Maybe you can see them. I'll put some pictures here to show you what I'm talking about. Um, which moved the uh, windshield up about 40 millimeters and tilts it forward a little bit. And that gives me more room right here for either my phone or my GPS, or I have actually been running a tablet with drive mode dashboard. Uh, didn't put it on today, I'm going to work. I, I kind of know where I'm going, so. No fear of getting lost today, hopefully. But yeah, we just, uh, we're just gonna ride to work here on the, the happy commute. My commute's about, about 55 miles over those mountains. It's an interesting commute. The, uh, these hills here were the ones that were on fire. I don't know, some of you may have noticed on the news a month or so ago. California was once again on fire. Actually still on fire in some places, but uh, we had hundreds of wildfires going at one time. And you'll see up here as long as GoPro hangs in there. Uh, our fire, the airport fire, called the airport fire because ironically there's an RC airplane 
airport on the other side of those mountains in Orange County and there was a place or an area where people were going probably kids because there's a, there's a pretty nice neighborhood over there and I would imagine everyone has teenagers because it's been there about that long but anyway yeah probably kids teenagers you know looking for a place to get away and do what teenagers do well the Forest Service and Caltrans were a little worried about people getting back there and possibly starting a fire so heavy equipment was back there moving rocks around moving this around doing this and that trying to block access and you know mitigate the possibilities of uh, uh, uh. Yeah, that was interesting I was on a helicopter there for a second anyway reduce the possibilities of uh, a fire accidentally breaking out well what did they do they dropped a big rock and caused a spark and caused a fire and it got out of hand before they could get a, a grip on it and it just exploded it come ripping across these mountains you know 20 miles away and like I said you'll see when we get up here but uh, yeah trying to reduce the possibility of uh, forest fires when they started one the only thing I miss about COVID there was no traffic during COVID. Being an essential worker, I of course worked through COVID, as many of you did. So it was kind of nice having like literally no traffic. You know, it's funny, you see a, a review or two online of the, the Versus 300, you know, and people will call it a great beginner level adventure bike it cracks me up it doesn't really bother me but it cracks me up that just because the engine is only 500 cc's or less it's a beginner bike it's like any of us with experience can't possibly have any fun on this bike right i just don't get that while it is great for a beginner rider it's not a beginner bike it's a bike no bike is a beginner bike for crying out loud any bike will kick your ass if you let it been riding for almost 50 years and here i am riding this beginner bike i think that's people fixation and wanting to always upgrade to a bigger heavier bike I mean, yeah, I have an R1250 GS. I love that bike. It's the best bike I've ever owned, bar none. And I've owned a lot of bikes. Um, but, I mean, if I had to have, well, if I had to have one bike to do it all, it would be the GS, sorry. <laughs> but, if you only had this bike, and other than wanting a little bit more power and maybe cruise control and I don't know if, you, if you're if you're into gadgets which I'm not and all the new tech that's on the new bikes and you know I guess that would be a reason to upgrade but if you're riding solo do you really need a, a 1250 1100 or a 1000 or even a 900 or even a 790 I don't know. Something to think about when you're buying your next bike. Lighter is always better. That's my piece of advice for anyone looking for a new bike, especially if you're gonna ride off-road. You know, weight should be your number one consideration if you're gonna go off-road. And maybe that's why I'm so hard on the Himalayan, is this is a heavy, fat pig. Thunder ride but no denying she's a handful on single tracks and i would say compared to a uh, you know a bike in the 300 to 400 pound range uh it's a handful off road on just gravel and or even a dirt road that weight sometimes just gets hard to manage you know and i don't know those of you that have experience on both know what I'm talking about. I mean, to put it in perspective, what a Himalayan is 430-ish pounds. 
my GS is 530-ish pounds. It's only 100 pounds heavier than a Himalayan. Think about that. That's crazy. Same with the KLR. There are KLR ver versions of the KLR that are only like 40 pounds lighter than a R1250 GS. And that's another reason I, I've owned a KLR, but I wouldn't own one right now. Not saying it's not a great bike and it does a lot of good positive things for thousands of people. There's, it's a cult following the KLR. And understandably, it's a great bike on the street and they could do some off-roading. But it could be so much better. You know, it's kind of like this bike. It's a great, great bike, but yeah, it, it definitely could be a lot better. Oh, Tesla's everywhere. I mean, that's why I think this CF Moto 450 MT coming in, it's going to kick the Japanese ass. It really is. You look at Kawasaki's liner for 2025, they didn't change anything. All new bold graphics. That's it. I mean, come on, guys. The CF450, just based on all the reviews, and they can't all be lying, because no one's giving them a free bike, is better than anything Kawasaki makes in that segment. Better than this bike, better than the KLR. It, it, and in every way, it's better. You know, I, I wish it was a little lighter, but they did a really good job of balancing the bike, and it just doesn't feel as heavy as the specs show. Anyway, yeah, we've got some some burn here. This whole town, not the whole town, but 50% of the town through here, Cariso Village, got, got roasted. That guy back there lost like four structures and 20-something cars. You know, it kind of hops and skips. These guys here, you know, they always decorate pretty heavily for the holidays and they lost everything. It's a shame. Hopefully everybody's doing okay and the government's helping them out with some relief of some kind. I'm not sure how fire insurance works up here when you live in the National Forest, but wishing everybody well and, and all that. Anyway, back to heavy bikes. Oh yeah, these, this parking lot here, see all those cars? That was the parking lot, I believe, for the construction workers that were working on the road. They didn't have time to come get their cars. That's how fast it came across that mountain and just destroyed everything in its path. So yeah, they all lost their cars too. But yeah, back to heavy bikes. I really think if you're gonna buy a bike with some off-road riding in consideration or in mind, you really need to be paying attention to the weight, the weight of the bike. And don't pay so much attention to how much horsepower it has. Less than 1% of the riders that ride adventure bikes off-road, and I, I'm just, this is personal opinion, based on observation with riding with people and my own riding, Probably less than 1% ever use half the horsepower the bike has anyway when they're riding off-road. It might even be less than half the horsepower. People don't even get out of second gear for the most part, most riders. And if you're just starting off-road riding, you're not gonna get out of second gear. So don't get fixated on horsepower. They almost need two motorcycles these days, right? And if I had to pick two bikes out of my garage to keep and sell the rest, I definitely would keep the R1250 GS. And I think my other bike would be my, my DRZ400. You know, I've got just about everything covered with those two bikes. It's hard to find a bike that'll do all that, right? Everything the DRZ will do and everything the GS will do. It doesn't exist, in fact. And so, you know, that uh, Rainbow Unicorn just isn't out there. A lot of people will claim that their bike is the Unicorn, but it, it's not. 
you know and when you're talking rough single track all the way to a touring cross country two up with camping gear there's no one bike that does all that no once you ride with good cruise control you'll never want to do long distance riding again without it it's funny when you get older you start thinking about things like okay how many more riding seasons do i have left <laughs> Oh boy. So at this speed, this uh, windshield seems to be doing great. I really don't have, you know, much turbulence until an 18 wheeler goes by like that. But uh, otherwise, there's no wind hitting me, I don't think. Let's open this up. Oh, no, the wind's way up here. So it's, it's actually going over my head. to see how it works out at uh, at 70 on the freeway when we get up here we got some fog are we still filming yep what's with the fog I mean, just yesterday afternoon, it was a, almost 100 degrees right through here, and today we have fog. Bizarro. Speaking of bizarro weather, hopefully Milton doesn't kick everyone's ass. And then it, uh, it re-energized itself in the Gulf back up to Category 5. Hopefully by tonight, Hopefully by now, I didn't check this morning, it's back down to a four, hopefully a three before it makes landfall, but yeah. foggy get behind this cyber truck the sheet metal monster Anyway, we're, uh, we're on the highway portion of the commute. We'll see how these brackets do. It's 70 ish miles an hour. The clip on is all the way down. And honestly, uh, it's not bad. Uh, doing what, 75? 75 on the speedo, probably only doing about 72 GPS. But anyway, we go by our speedo speed anyway. Right? Yeah, it's not bad. Wind is above my visor. It's right about here, if you guys can see. So, you know, and I've got plenty of visibility over the windshield. So far, so good. As long as the brackets don't break. Ah, I used, uh, what did I use? I don't know, I'll put it in the description. It's a uh, resin print. The resin was uh, basically engineering resin, hard, made for machining, you know, impact resistant parts, plastic parts. Wind protection wise, I'm getting a little over here on my shoulders knock my camera off. That would suck. I'd have to buy a new one. Darn. It's funny, I have this, uh, the rear suspension links adjusted to give me more ground clearance. 
and I'm basically on my balls and my feet, almost tiptoeing. And I'm not short. I'm not tall, but I'm not short. 5, 10, 11, somewhere in there. Electric vehicles everywhere in Orange County, California. Did you read uh, last month or maybe last quarter? The Ford F-150 has been the number one selling vehicle in America, in the U.S., for 42 years. In the last month, maybe the last quarter, like I said, I don't remember. The, uh, the Rat Toyota RAV4 and the Tesla Model Y passed it in sales. I don't know how that'll end up overall at the end of the year, but I find that interesting. That a purely electric vehicle is a top contender for the best selling vehicle in the US. It already is the best selling vehicle in the world. I know a lot of Americans think the U.S. is the world, but, you know, sorry. <laughs> it's not. So, if it, uh, if the best-selling vehicle in the world takes over number one spot in the U.S., that's, uh, that's gonna, you know, put a damper on the, uh, propaganda that nobody wants an EV. see how someone could really rack up a lot of miles on this riding across country. I mean for me other than the lack of cruise control it's got everything else. It's comfortable. The wind protection is adequate. It's smooth. Gets good gas mileage. I don't know man. Hard to go wrong with this bike. Probably the only faults I can find with it is uh, you're supposed to get a valve check every time you get an oil change, which I think is 7,000 or 7,500 miles. And if you don't know how to do the uh, valve check and or adjustment if required, it can get pretty expensive. I've read posts of people saying that their local Kawasaki shop charged them close to $1,000 to adjust the valves because they required adjustment. Wow, that's... Man, four valve adjustments, you could just buy another bike. Man, I really like these Shinko 804-805s on the highway. It's amazing that they're somewhat of a knobby tire, but man, perfectly smooth on the freeway. A lot of people complain about the excessive shifting on this thing. You saw, before I got to the intersection, I was already in fifth gear there, kind of. It is kind of ridiculous, but I mean, it's a 300cc bike. What do you want? That wasn't obnoxious. Yeah, it says I can still go 78 miles. Probably only 35 left. Should be good to go. And we can, you know, jam Alice in Chains unplugged. Well, I want to thank you guys for riding along with me here to work on this beautiful Southern California sunny day. A little fog this morning, but uh, wasn't too bad. Um. I blabbed on about this and that and let you experience my commute to work. So um, any questions or comments please post them down below. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and if you did please subscribe. The more subscribers the better and if you liked it click on that thumbs up button. That will Tell the algorithm that maybe other people should see the video with like interest. Anyway, you guys have a good one. 
and uh, ride safe and maybe I'll see you out here. <laughs>